Hey folks, welcome back to my live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Who do we have here today? On this lovely Friday afternoon, thanks so much for joining in. We're going to be uh, going over Miles Davis classic, So What? Miles Davis, So What? This is written or recorded in 1959 on his classic, iconic record, perhaps the greatest jazz album of all time, Kind of Blue. Hey, Dave, thanks for chiming in. Hmm. Check, one, two, check, check, check. <laughs> hey, Yukon. Welcome. Let me double check my settings here and see what's going on. Check my, oh, no echo? Echo or no echo? <laughs> two, two. All right. Let me see here. Um, how about now? Is that better? Can you hear me good? Okay. Tom, welcome. Dave, welcome. Um, perfecto. That's what I like to hear. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. This is Miles Davis. So what this lesson, it's a modal jazz beginner lesson, an intro lesson to modal jazz. Assuming you know nothing about the modes, you know nothing about modal jazz. We got to know a little bit about the modes, you know, maybe know what Dorian is and stuff like that. The last song I taught was well, Over the Rainbow, <laughs> the Eric Clapton version. But the song right before that was John Coltrane's Giant Steps, which is the complete opposite of So What? Funny thing is, John Coltrane's Giant Steps was recorded months later after So What? Coltrane went in this crazy hard bop direction after. But he also composed the song Impressions, which is kind of based off of so what um, modal jazz or the same, I should say the same chord sequence, the two chords. So we're going to talk about that, how to approach it, maybe some modal comping, some mode scales, some improv ideas. Uh, Bill, welcome. Carl, welcome. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining in. And so, yeah, if you like these videos, I appreciate the thumbs up. Of course, that helps my channel. It helps me keep these going. I know most of you are already on Patreon, so I don't have to say that. But if you're not, for some reason, please join Patreon. There's a free tier, so it costs you nothing, and you get some of the bonus and benefits that I post at all at the free tier level. The, it's called the everyone level. But if you're a member on Patreon, especially now if you just join in, you do get access to all of my PDFs and tabs and sound slice practice videos at the silver tier. And there's only two tiers uh, available right now. And then the platinum tier gets you access to all of my video lessons and bonus videos. So if you want the bonus videos and the videos, there's lots of them, <laughs> about a thousand videos, uh, then you can have access to all of those at the platinum tier. Um, if you just want access to my PDFs and tabs, then I would say join at the silver tier. So let's get started, you guys. Speaking of PDFs, grab the PDFs. It's The link is in the description. It's just free for your educational purposes only. Um, and it's my arrangement. There's a lead sheet and there's my arrangement that I'm going to walk you through for playing the melody to So What. Um, you might see it in the old jazz. If you guys are real book guys, you'll have this probably, right? <laughs> you know, so um, it's pretty good arrangement there. And so my arrangement is is not much different of that. I'm just showing you where I would like to play the melody up here. Even though it's actually done on the bass on the recording, but guitar players should learn that riff. Mm. Portlander. 
That was up a half step. I'll talk about that. And then back. soloing that's that's the fun part we'll talk about that in a second but let's learn the melody first let's get some of these quartal chord voicings that are so common in the modal jazz style quartal what does quartal mean quartal means fourths we want to think in terms of fourth for these voicings that are kind of pianistic sounding but guitar players love fourths because we're tuned in fourths when you just do this those are perfect fourths. So guitar players, we love fourths. These shapes, those are all fourths. So I'm gonna show you some really basic comping. I'll show you an exercise on how to think about these quartal harmony. Uh, the piano player McCoy Tyner really used these um, extensively but musicians from Bill Evans and of course lots of guitar players use these quartal voicings, fourth voicings, stacked fourth, perfect fourth. So this stuff. Okay, so instead of your typical D minor seven like this, you would remove the A and do this. So it's a D minor 11, and that's what you'll see on my chart in the fake books in general. Sometimes I'll say D minor add four, but because I have the flat seven here, I would call it D minor 11, not bad four. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Spring break, woohoo, so what? Uh, we'll have to do a spring song tomorrow, maybe a Bruce Springsteen song. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, let's do a uh, spring can really hang you up the most tomorrow. It's one of my favorite songs that are that has a spring title in it. I was talking with my buddy Joe earlier. Many of you know Joe, of course, he's in all my performance videos. Um, he's my main collaborator on rhythm guitar. Uh, we were talking about songs that have the word spring in it and can only name about five songs. Spring can really hang you up the most. Spring is here. It might as well be spring. Up jumped spring. Enjoy spring. So that one's going to be on my Patreon page next. I'm going to put all of these spring songs on there. Up jump spring is a Freddie Hubbard song. Uh, Joy Springs, a great Clifford Brown song. So there's a lot of great spring songs for us to look at. You know me, I, I, I'm seasonal. I'm kind of a seasonal person, even though I'll play autumn leaves because, hey, in Australia, it's autumn. So I'll play autumn uh, tonight from, at my gig. So uh, we got to do some, got to mix it up for for everyone around the globe. So, but the spring here in Portland, Oregon, uh, might as well be spring. Spring can hang you up the most. Uh, so what? <laughs> Let's get started. All right, grab the tabs, grab the PDFs. It's in the description. It's free for your educational purposes only. Um, let's learn the melody first. I don't. I'll just say this, and if you, you'll probably read my my Patreon post. It's a 32 bar standard song form, except there are really no chord changes. There's only two chord changes: D minor and E flat minor. It just goes up a half step. Okay, and that that you have to kind of catch those changes. You know, I mean, that's part of the, the whole game of it is to catch that modulation up a half step to E flat minor. Um, when we'll talk about scales, it's typically a Dorian scale. The melody is out of the Dorian mode. So let's get the melody first. I'm starting here on D and I'm jumping up a fifth. You can do it like this, but I like the, this fingering lays really well for me. So D, A, B, C. And then D, E, and then to C, and then D, okay? And it starts on the and of one. So it'd be like one, okay? Work that out and play it with me. One, slowly. Here it is again. See, look at this fingering. This is really kind of sweet, actually. If you start on A, this, that's why I like this fingering. It's kind of easy. I like easy. But I encourage you to try some other fingerings that might work well for you. Okay. 
So again, get that. I'm using my pinky here for the D. And then I go straight to the A, which is the fifth from D. Okay. And it has that natural six. And that's what makes it Dorian. You just improvise with the, the scale. I mean, the melody. Maybe a little blues. Anyways, we'll talk more about improv. I have a scale sheet, too, that I attached uh, to this post. So, again, if you're watching it um, on Patreon, not live, um, then download the scale sheet because I want to make sure you know your scales, your Dorian mode, your pentatonic, your blue scale. I like the melodic minor a lot. So you get this. We could do whole tone. And we could take it pretty far out. We could do a lot of triads. Um, diatonic to the key. And that's one of the aspects and why I feel it's so important to learn so what because you don't have to worry about two five ones. You just think, hey, I'm in the key of D minor Dorian or D minor. Like I said, it could be melodic minor, but just one tonal center. You don't have to think about two five one, two five one. So that's why, again, I'm saying this is like the opposite of giant steps. Because giant steps, we were trying to, you know, keep track of all those two five ones and where is it going. But in this, you just have this D minor, D minor, eight bars. I'm doing the modal chordal style, then it repeats, and it's just going. Bah, bah. This is the common pattern. So then it goes up half step, and then we can throw in our two five licks. We could throw in our blues licks and have a lot of fun doing triads, doing planing. It's we play intervallically. Whatever. So modal songs is really different and fun from your typical jazz standard. And I really suggest to all my students, at least, I, I have them, you know, jam modally. And it's kind of fun to have a tune like So What that's really super catchy, a riff. Um, if you if you all know Ronnie Jordan, that hearing his version in the 90s uh, was really fun because it was kind of an acid jazz version. <laughs> Kind of a funky, and it, with the I, he had a uh, drum machine as well, so it was kind of the acid jazz vibe, hip hop uh, version of so. Check it out, Ronnie Jordan, uh, the late Ronnie Jordan. He was a great player. Um, so let's get this melody again. I'm just giving you an overview of what so what is about and why I feel it's so important to learn for guitar players because we can work on our comping, our chordal comping, um, modal comping. We can work on our modes. We can work on fretboard and phrasing, everything. And you don't have to worry about 251, you know, modulation, none of that stuff, just up a half step. And in that case, you're just going to move your hand up one fret from where you just were. <laughs> That's my quick, easy trick. So here we go. Let's get the melody on D. One, two, three, four, one. I know you want to you want to you mean to show you what this is, and yeah, you gotta learn this comping pattern. It's an E minor eleven to a D minor eleven. So this is kind of again that modal style because D Dorian. If we're in the key of D Dorian, that means key of C. So in the key of C, you have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major. This is G seven, <laughs> A minor. B half dim in C major. I'll say that again with sevens. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B minor seven flat five, C major. Always be able to do this. I know many of you guys are tired of me starting off with these uh, chord warm ups on my lessons, so I'm not going to take time in doing that. But if you don't already have that down, check out my harmonized scale worksheets, my sound slice practice videos, because I always say be able to do this as a chord warm up. So when you do this uh, Dorian modal vamp, you're going to go E minor 7 to D minor 7. And that's like playing Phrygian and Dorian in the key of C. But we want to remove the fifth here, E to B, and just create a fourth. So again, take your regular chord voicing, your drop two chord voicing that we all know and love. I call them grip chords. 
um, and then just remove the fifth here and just bar across. That's quartal harmony right there, fourths. E, A, D, G, stacked fourths. And then slide it down to D minor, 11, D, G, C, F. These are all in the key of C, but it's gonna sound like D, Dorian, because the bass will be kind of hanging around D and everyone's gonna be hanging around D and not C. So it's not gonna sound like a C major chord. And now I'm just having fun uh, going through different chord voicings in D Dorian. We don't have to just do these two chords, but it's common when you comp to hang around the tonic D in this case and just go up a whole step to the E minor. And then you can go up a half step, even though it's not in the key, but you can kind of do this bluesy phrase like this. And then you can go to F. You can go below. So here's the riff now, now that you have the minor 11 voicing from E to D, we want to get that on beat three and the and a four. It's a, it's a Charleston on three, four. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two. And just make sure you get that easy chord voicing, okay? This is just an intro lesson again on So What. If you've never played it before, you're going to learn it right now with me. And don't forget to do this if you're enjoying the lesson. I appreciate it. And type in the chat. I'd love to see uh, who else is here today. Um, so let's get the riff with that chord hit on three and the and of four. E minor 11 and D minor 11. One, two, three. Three, four, one. Three, four, and. Okay, and then it does this. E, 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 D. It's just a slight variation. So make sure you get those little variations there. Um, let me double check everything too. I'm teaching it to you. Right? <laughs> this is again how I play it. Again, that's a second A. That was 16 bars. Now we just take exactly what we did and move it up a half a step. Guitar players have it so easy. Because <laughs> what we just did here, we just move up one fret. We don't have to think about anything. No, we don't have to refinger. We just move our hand. So we love this. This this is a guitar player's dream. <laughs> just moving our, our hands at one fret. It's easy. Just don't look down at your fretboard, then you might confuse yourself. Back to D. Two, three, and solo. Then you can just come. It's got eight bars, another eight bars. Go ahead and solo. I'll come for you. Ready? Up a half step. And I'm doing this, I'm doing this Charleston rhythm quite a bit. So you want to get that rhythm down, that Charleston rhythm. But really, the comping is, you know, we want to interact with the soloists. If they leave some space, then you fill in the space. <laughs> if, they, if they're not leaving some space, then maybe you could just do long notes, you know? You could do really textural stuff. So I'm going to talk about an exercise here for comping in a second. That will take you through the whole scale in the key of C, which is D Dorian again. 
I'm going to show you this little quick method here. Uh, get that comping worksheet too. I, I put a little modal worksheet for you uh, besides the scale worksheet and besides the um, tabs, my lead sheets. So you, you get a little free package here. Uh, of course, I'm going to recommend that you join Patreon because I've got 4,600 posts on Patreon, and that's no joke. Um, tons of materials. Um, one-stop shopping right there. So just you can learn a lot from my lessons, I hope. And I really appreciate you being there and supporting my channel on Patreon. Um, so it's going into, this will be now my eighth year come September on Patreon, uh, putting out lessons for the last three years since I think 21, 22, 21. I can't count. I've been putting out posts every day on Patreon. Woohoo! every day. So uh, type in the chat where you are, who you are, where you're at. I appreciate seeing some, some feedback. Tell me how much you love Patreon. Uh, my Diamond Tier members, I'll probably be opening up a spot or two in the next month. So if you want to grab a 30-minute private lesson with me, that's what the Diamond Tier offers besides getting access to all of my materials. We also will meet up via Zoom, and I'll help you navigate my materials and figure out where you're at and what I can offer you and help you with. Um, we're all learning this together, I always say, you know. So that's, we've got the melody down. We've got the riff down. Let's talk some scales and let's, let's talk a little bit more comping. Tom from Delaware. See, I knew, I didn't know you were from Delaware. Now I know. That's good to know. Well, thanks for hanging out, Tom. I know it's a 7.50 p.m. right there in your time. So let's do this exercise, you guys. I want to show you this exercise on thinking quarterly. Now, just because we say fourths, that doesn't necessarily mean has to be perfect fourths. It could mean an augmented fourth, a sharp fourth, too. So let's talk about this a little bit. Here's C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7. We're going back to the harmonized scale. Okay, make sure you can do that in key of C. So here's a good way to think about this. And I talked about this exercise before. This is the inner voice leading like this. Where you're lowering the seven to the six. But now we're getting said, we're gonna do the five to the four and that will help us create these quartal voicings. So let's take a C major seven like this. So drop two voicing again, grip uh, my, my term grip chord, C major 7, take the G and go to F. Now we got fourths, okay? We got a little tritone action there, but that's okay. It's still a fourth. So again, here's the technique. Take a C major 7, grip shape, drop two voicing, C major 7. Take the G, the fifth, so it's not a perfect fifth and drop it to a fourth. That's going to be an F. Okay. And then we're going to do the same through the whole scale. D minor, seven. Drop two. Take the A and drop it down a whole step. Just bar across. There you go. That's how we create that minor 11. Okay. So we take the D minor seven, the true four note voicing. And we take the A, we go to G. Now we have those stacked fourths. These are perfect fourths, by the way. Okay. And then now we're going to do the same on E minor. Take the fifth. Now we have E minor 11. Okay. F major 7. Now if we stay diatonic to the key of C, which is again D Dorian, this C will now become B. So we're going to have this voicing. Really sweet voicing. Here's F major 7. F major 7 with the flat 5 or sharp 11. I, ex I would recommend that you experiment. With these voicings. They're really sweet. Kind of uh, angular and ambiguous because of the intervallic structure of those fourth intervals. This is all in the key of C. This is a great exercise, just taking something that you already know and then just changing, modifying it. You 
can even use it in your comping to create kind of a melodic style comping. Instead of this, like we did last time, the seven to the six, where it's going to the four. F major seven. Now on the G seven. Listen to that one. So I'm hoping that you experiment with these. So I'm going so slowly. It's beautiful. A minor seven, just like the D minor and the E minor. We take the five and go to four. So there's our shape. I often call it the magic shape, the stack force. Parallel. Parallel means same shape. Parallel harmony. Here it is, chromatic. And it's okay to play around with chromaticism. As long as you kind of key you're still in. <laughs> you don't want to lose yourself. Or well, maybe you do. <laughs> we have a couple more, you guys. One more. B minor 7 flat 5. Take that F and go to the E, and there you go. We have that magic shape again, the stack fourths. Pretty sweet. By the way, it'd be here on the top four strings if you're playing the ukulele, which I do often. So we have that and that and this. It's very important. So this and this, B and A, E and D. Same intervallic structure, perfect fourths all the way through. This one is not. harmonized scale in the key of C using these fourth voicings, quartal voicings again, simply by just taking your C major seven, taking the G, the fifth, and going to the four. D minor seven, taking the fifth, going to the four, leaving everything else the same. This is the trick on how to do it. D minor 11. F major seven sharp. G7, G11, dominant chord has a sus in there. A minor 7, A minor 11, B minor 7 flat 5 turns into B minor 11 or add 4 if you want. Okay, so that's how you do it. Put on your backing track, your I Will Pro, and have fun comping. So that's the introduction to comping using these fourth quartal voicings on the guitar. Um, let's talk some soloing ideas. Again, we're in a standard 32 bar song form. What I said in the, um, on my Patreon post is try not to get lost. You, you have to just go ahead and get lost. I mean, that's the whole fun of it. The game is to get lost and then find out, Oh, I was a half step in the wrong place, but this will, this ties into your sense of phrasing. Okay, like feeling the phrasing. And I would say start off with these kind of two bar phrases, you know, four bar phrases, just kind of um, common phrasing. You know, just sing your phrases and then go up past it. I'm talking about the idea of just singing and phrasing, being lyrical and trying to follow the form. Again, I would suggest, and I could put on a backing track here to practice with too. Um, maybe I'll do that later for the bonus Patreon lesson is to expand on this topic more. But what I'm gonna show you now just are some basic improv uh, tools, the basics, the foundation. Know your scale, know your blue scale, know your pentatonic, know your Dorian mode, know your triads, okay? So let's talk about this. Uh, first of all, know your Dorian scale. How 
I'm starting here. This is on that worksheet, by the way. If you don't already have it, grab it. It's in the description. It'll just say scale soloing. It says uh, so what soloing. We just want to be able to play that scale and improvise. <laughs> some arpeggios I just busted into a D minor 7. C. You can go through the scale. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G7, A minor 7, B. These are all just tools. Again, that's another way of thinking um, of improvising is using vertical harmony, like the chord. It's a harmonized scale, right? But playing it through the scale. So you're going... I'm still in the key of C. You know, you can just kind of, again, go that way along the fretboard, etc. So uh, you want to be able to know your chords, your triads, and you want to be able to know the scale linearly, too, harmonically. So it all ties in. So what I'm just going to recommend, again, I keep saying this, we're in the key of C. <laughs> all right, to me, that's, well, check out my modal studies uh, on Patreon, the worksheet and the videos. Um, because key of C to me means this, and I'm just going to say this, This again, I'm probably going to get some feedback here, but D Dorian is this. I'm, now I'm going to play it on the six string, because I want to use all six strings, and I don't want to be limited. Playing a little pattern. I just recently reached a little guitar essentials on Patreon. It was thirds, and that's what I'm playing here, thirds. Because thirds are really nice. Do, 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 do. thirds and I'm not, I'm not talking about this stuff. I'm not talking about this you guys will catch you know, you know song. this is those are thirds but I'm just talking about like which is playing kind of playing again with that interval of a third degree great way to learn so Dorian D Dorian E Phrygian F Lydian G Mixo you can see how I'm using the fretboard. A Aeolian, B Locrian, C Ionian, D Dorian. So by what I'm demonstrating here is my 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 process of trying to memorize the whole fretboard in the key of C, which is D Dorian. So when that backing track kicks on and the band's playing D Dorian, I know I'm just in the key of C. On the piano, it's all white keys on the piano. It's super easy, but it's not as easy on the guitar to say, hey, play key of C all over the fretboard. You know, most guitar players gravitate toward one scale position, but I think it's important to learn the seven modes in relationship to the D, Dorian, in this case, C, Ionian, um, and then also play it vertically and horizontally. So like this, one string. It's all this key of C. Start here. C. Start on every string. We don't want to be limited to just one position, okay? Again, this is why I, I always say, so what makes a great study playing for guitar players for us because that we can try out so many different improv techniques uh, that might be harder to do on Giant Steps or Have You Met Miss Jones or Stella by Starlight or other standards, all of me. Uh, in this case, so what? We have 16 bars just in D minor. We have a lot of time to explore the fretboard and just play diatonic to the key of C. And then we go up a half step to E flat minor, Dorian, and that's the key of D flat. So same thing. It's just a great practice tool for us to just run up and down scales, patterns, and try to be free and creative while staying within that key center. And of course, you know, you don't have to stay within that key center. You can play some blue notes. You can play that major seven, you can take it outside, you know. Um, you can think dominant chord on, on D minor. You can think G7. What would I play a D7, G, D minor to G7 ideas? Um, you might think, you might try to build some tension and superimpose a five chord. Like you're going D minor, A7, D minor, A7. And that's very valid as well in these little chromatic 2-5 bebopisms. Um, 
all that stuff work. You throw in all those cliches too. Um, it's so much fun. So really, if you're new to So What modal jazz, um, take a break from your jazz standards and try this song, work on some improv. I guarantee you'll get some great ideas, just like I guaranteed you right, with new ideas from learning and looking at giant steps. So what's a lot easier than giant steps? It's actually, this song is taught in every music school for jazz improvisation. You spend a lot of time on so what. So definitely take that time if you wanna, um, if you're just getting into jazz guitar. And again, many of you know, my lessons are geared for you. <laughs> those who are just getting into jazz guitar, that's 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 my demographic. That's what, what I get the most. Is I, hey, I've been playing for 30 years, 40 years. And I said, but I'm just getting into jazz guitar. Where do I start? I say, start here. You know, learn the grip chords, play the standards, play autumn leaves, play blue bossa, all of me or minor swing if you're into gypsy jazz, you know, and then uh, Sweet George Brown. And then I say, so what? It's a great song with my students. So definitely um, this modal stuff is important. So the other scales I was recommending is you can't go wrong with just a pentatonic. D minor penta. F fun. We love penta. Rock players love pentas. Quiz, D major, D minor penta is equivalent to what major penta? Let me see some hands or group participation here. Type in the chat. Let's see who's the fastest today. D minor penta equals blank major penta. We talked about this the other day for those who caught my Eric Clapton lesson on Over the Rainbow. I was showing the pentatonics. Tom D at E flat, Yukon F, Graham F, F is it. D minor, go up three frets. Now you're in F major. That's okay, Tom. See, now I just wanna get bluesy in F. But that would work great. I'm thinking this F. That's F major pentatonic using the sliding scale. You all know the sliding scale, right? Country rock, sweet home Alabama. That's such a beautiful shape to learn your penta. It goes like this, one, two, three, five. Oh, sorry, one, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. I'm not talking tabs, I'm talking formulas. And then once you get to that six here, the D, then you switch into this. And I play D minor blues, as you can tell. So that blue note is really beautiful. And then add the mono note. So again, uh, throw in, sneak in those modal notes, the two and the six degree. Those are your modal notes. Grant Green did stuff like this all the time. So again, right on the, and the trick to that lick, that Grant Greenism, start on the two, on the six. So the E in this case, and the B, because that's where those half steps are. That's what's important. Okay, that's the trick to that lick. So um, pentatonics, F major pentatonic, D minor pentatonic, D minor blues. I like the melodic minor scale quite a bit. So here's D melodic minor. Honestly, it's going to clash. <laughs> so you have to, you know, your ear, that will open up some other new sounds, including a whole tone, which you could do on this, but I don't, I'm not going to take it too far outside. Check out my worksheet. Just know that start my recommendation, master D Dorian all over the fretboard. Use this song, this chord progression to help you explore the fretboard, thinking thirds, 
sixes, intervallically fourths, fifths. These chord voicings will help you do that too. If you want to play more intervallically. So, um, and just learn the melody. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about for now. Let me know if you want a bonus lesson on Patreon with talking a little bit deeper into some improv ideas, uh, going through those triads, everything. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff that we can explore. I just wanted to give you a good introduction. This is, again, these lessons are for everybody, uh, but they get, sometimes they stay on YouTube. Sometimes they get reposted only on YouTube Tracy member and Patreon. Um, so do this if you enjoy this lesson, grab the PDFs tabs, work on so what, use your backing tracks, work on those quartal, have fun, uh, sing what you play. Of course, that's so important too, and just connect to your music. It makes it so much more enjoyable. And we'll see you all next time. Have a good day.